All right, so now that we've got our kinematic equations, we have our four kinematic equations and we got them two different ways. We did it one way using uh, just some algebra and some intuition and another way using calculus. Let's work some examples. It's always one thing to understand where they came from and it's a whole other thing to actually use them. So now I'll just wanna go through a few examples. So a motorist suddenly notices a stalled car and slams on the brakes, negatively accelerating at 6.3 meters per second squared. Unfortunately, this isn't enough and a collision ensues. From the damage sustained, police estimate that the car was going 18 kilometers per hour at the time of the collision. They also, also measure skid marks 34 meters long. How fast was the motorist going when the brakes were first applied and how much time elapsed from initial braking to the collision? So the biggest thing when doing any sort of physics problem is setting the problem up. Uh, a, th a thing that always threw me off as a student was the fact that you get to pick your own coordinates. You get to pick where you want to start the problem and you get to pick where it ends and you get to pick the direction that everything was moving. So it always kind of threw me off um, trying to decide what to do here. But it really doesn't matter what direction you choose or what orientation you choose as long as you're consistent. So I tend to just always choose positive movement right, negative movement left, and if we were going up and down, positive up, negative down, just because that's kind of what we're used to anyway. So let's take a look at this situation. So a motorist notices a car and slams on the brakes. He skids and then he hits the car. So we just have one dimensional motion. So let's get a straight line here. And I am going to choose this point here when he initially hits the brakes as my origin. So I'm gonna choose that to be zero meters and we'll make a little note, hits brakes. So right here is when the motorist hits the brakes. And then it says, let's see, it says there were skid marks of 34 meters long. So we can assume they skidded or we know that he skidded for 34 meters. And then right here is the collision. So now we have our situation and I am always going to choose, oops, I'm always going to choose or usually going to choose rightward motion as positive and leftward motion as negative, all right? So now that we have a little a sketch of sorts, let's get down the information that we're given. It says that the car negatively accelerates at 6.3 meters per second squared. So if it negatively accelerates, that means we're ex he's accelerating this way. He's slowing down, so his direction of acceleration is to the left. If he's moving to the right and slowing down, that means he's accelerating to the left. So our acceleration, oh, got a pin there. Our acceleration is going to be negative 6.3 meters per second squared. Okay. It says, unfortunately, this isn't enough. The collision happens. The police say that the car was going 18 kilometers per hour at the time of the collision. So that's given us the speed or the velocity, right, at the time of the collision. So right here, when they collide, we know that the car was going 18 kilometers an hour. So that's going to be, in this situation, our final velocity. Our final velocity was 18 kilometers per hour. And they say they also measure, they also, excuse me, measure skid marks of 34 meters long. Now, a lot of times you'll see it written uh, delta X for the change in position was 34 meters. This is fine and good and correct. I've always preferred to split it up into the initial and final. When I'm working on the math itself, I've always preferred initial and final. And so the way that we've set this up, we have our initial at zero meters at the origin. He hits the brakes, he skids, and then he collides at 34. So our initial position is going to be zero meters and our final position is going to be 34 meters. Okay, part A says, how fast was the motorist going when the brakes were first applied? So the next step is always to identify what exactly we're looking for. We want to know the velocity, how fast were they going, right here when the brakes were applied. Well, I chose this to be my starting point. This was my initial position. 
So what we're asked about, what we're asked to find, is the initial velocity. That's what we want. Now, we've gotten all of our information down, and so now let's take a look at our kinematics. So choosing the right kinematic is always a big part of uh, solving any of these problems. So I've got all of our kinematics right here, and we're gonna see what we need, which one we need. We want initial velocity, and we have both initial and final position, we have final velocity, and we have our acceleration. So I need to find one that uses the things that we have and includes the thing that we don't have. So let's take a look. For this first one right here, I have initial velocity in the equation, which is good. That's what I'm trying to find. But there's also time in this equation, and I don't have any information about time. Part B asks about time, but right now I don't have any information, so I'm not going to be able to use that first equation immediately to solve this. So let's take a look at the second one. Here it has position, which I know I have. It has final velocity, which I have. It includes the initial velocity, which is what I'm looking for, but again, this equation includes time, which is something that I don't know, so I can't use the second one. And similarly, this third equation also uses time, which I don't know, but also um, this doesn't really make use of the fact that we know the final velocity over here. So it looks like our fourth kinematic is going to be what's useful, and we can check it includes the final velocity, which we have, it includes the initial velocity, which we're looking for, it includes acceleration, which we have, and it includes both the final and initial position, which again, we have. So everything except what we're looking for, we know. We know the final velocity, we know acceleration, and both of the positions. We know all the information about the positions. So we're gonna use that one. So I'll do this in blue since that one's in blue. So we're gonna use v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax minus x naught. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the initial velocity. So we're gonna solve for the initial velocity. And so v naught squared is gonna be v squared minus 2ax minus x naught. And then taking the square root, we get v naught equals the square root of v squared minus 2a x minus x naught. X naught is a little messy. Yeah, there we go. Now, yes, we have plus or minus. Mathematically, we will always have this plus or minus the square root, but in this case, we know that he was moving forward when they collided, so we're gonna take the positive. That's another thing that happens quite often. Mathematically, you may get more than one answer, but physically, only one of them makes sense. And we know that he was moving in the right-hand direction uh, oriented with how we've drawn this when this started, so we wanna choose the positive square root. Okay, so we have this square root, and now we wanna plug in our numbers, but we have to be careful because not everything is given in the correct units, or not the correct units, but just different units. This is meters per second squared, meters, meters, but then we have kilometers per hour. So we can go about this one of two ways. We could either convert acceleration to kilometers per hour squared and then convert both of these to kilometers, or we could just convert our velocity here to meters per second, and then we'd have everything on the same ground. And since there's only one step there, that's what I'm gonna do. So before we plug in our numbers, I'm gonna get my final velocity in terms of meters per second. So kilometers per hour, I want meters on top and I want cancel kilometers. And we know there are 1000 meters and one kilometer. So there's our meters. For seconds, I want seconds on bottom and I want the hours to cancel. And I know that there are 3600 seconds in one hour, 60 times 60 seconds. So when we do this out, this comes out conveniently to five, five meters per second. So this is going to be our new, or it's the same one, just a different unit. This is gonna be what we use for our final velocity. So let's plug in these numbers. So we have V naught equals, V squared is just, oops, 
b squared is just 5 squared minus 2. Our acceleration in this case was negative, so that's negative 6.3. And I'm not writing the units inside here. You can if you want to, just to keep track of them, but you don't have to. Now that we know that they're all in the same SI units of meters and seconds, minus 2 times negative 6.3. Our final position was 34, so that's going to be times 34, and then minus our initial position, but our initial position was just zero, so I'm not going to write that, and all of this is underneath the square root. So we type all that into the calculator, and we get that when the car hit the brakes, it was going about 21.29 meters per second. And a lot of physics classes talk about significant figures. I'm not going to worry too much about significant figures. It's a way to make sure that you're not um, that you're not over calculating in a way. Um, if you're given a certain precision, you don't want to go beyond that in your final answer. But I think it's easier to uh, talk about significant figures after there's already a good handle on the problem. So I'll just always like to uh, not worry too much about that and just not get too crazy with it. So our initial velocity was 21.29 meters per second. Part B of our problem said how much time elapsed. So now from our starting point here to our end point, we want to know how much time has passed. And now we have V, V naught, excuse me, our V naught here. And we have all this other information that we already had. So now we can pick our equation that includes time and things that we know. And it's always good to pick the simplest one. Uh, we could pick this one. We have all the information here. We have acceleration. We have our initial velocity now. We have our initial position. We have final position. But that's a quadratic in T. And that's just going to be a little bit more difficult to solve. So it's always nice to just pick the easiest one available. So I'm going to pick this first one. V equals V naught plus AT. So if we have V equals V naught plus AT, and we want T, well in this case, T is going to equal V minus V naught divided by A. And we've already converted all of our units. The answer that we got earlier is in the same units of meters per second. So we just plug in those numbers. V, our initial, uh, or excuse me, our final velocity, we converted to five meters per second. So that's just gonna be five. Our initial velocity we have is 21.29. So we calculated that at 21.29 meters per second. And then divided by A, our acceleration was negative 6.3. Type all this into a calculator. We know that we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna get units of seconds out of this. So when we type that in, what do we get? We get about 2.59 seconds. So 2.59 seconds. So our total scenario is that we're moving along in a car. Right at this point, we notice a stopped car. We slam the brakes. We skid, accelerating negatively or decelerating for 34 meters and for 2.59 seconds, but it's not enough. And we hit this car after 2.59 seconds and we started at 21.29 meters per second, and we ended at collision at the given time of five meters per second.